All right. Hey guys, it's uh, Brent here from the shareinspirecreate.com or the, the sick show or the sick lounge. And today I've got Matthew on the other line there. Uh, Matthew Ship is a, a member in the sick lounge forum, the community we've got for photographers. And I'm just going to run through a little case study uh, of uh, that Matthew had when he had a problem, a photography problem. He put it into the forum and got some answers. How are you doing, Matthew? Pretty good. How are you? Yeah, great. Great. And tell, tell whoever's watching this where you're from. I'm from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, okay. Right, right middle of the country. So. Uh, good. Awesome. And um, also, so let's just jump straight in. What Matthew did was uh, he started a thread in the um, in the forum called Dark Room Shiny Objects. And uh, tell us a little bit about the shoot, Matthew. What what was your your main problem that you thought was going to happen um, at this commercial shoot that you that you had? My initial, my initial problem was um, you see in the background of this picture all the uh, the gleaming glass objects and everything and. I was really worried about um, having, being overwhelmed with specular highlights. Um, and in the end, when I got there, uh, that wasn't the case because it was a cloudy, rainy, horrible day. <laughs> so I, uh, I, had, I, had a new, I had a new challenge um, that, that came to me, and that was um, shooting, uh, shooting a very low light. Uh, okay. So initially, just so people know, you were commissioned by this pub or this, uh, this restaurant to yes. photograph it for – um for advertising purposes right to try and attract people to this place yeah that um that's brian there in the picture he i just snapped okay. that i belong to this um wine club for a while now and i snapped that picture put it up on facebook told him just says hey, look, look, look where i've been and he contacted me later says saying i really uh captured the mood in that shot he wondered if i would want to do some photos and i was you know great um so we went in uh uh talked what I was going to do, talked price, and um, it was a half-day process. He wanted me to shoot his bar, sh really show off the wine bar, and yep. um, mostly for social media. And then later on that night, he wanted me to come back and shoot um, an event he had with a, with a local band, and people having a good time. And I tried to, uh, tried to do my best to portray both of those. So um, he uh, um, seemed to be pretty happy with them. A um, few of the challenges I had was... Um, in the middle of a shoot, um, my one of my my backup battery gave out, and um, <laughs> so I was uh, <laughs> limping along on a half dead battery until my uh, wife saved me and, and brought in a new battery. Um, and then, uh, but I, I um, that was just one of the challenges. Some of the challenges you see with a lot of low lights. Um, so I had a lot of long exposures. Um, yeah, uh, there was learn there was some flash stuff in there, and I had a lot to learn about. Um, but uh, there were some great suggestions on the, uh, in the post on uh, using gels or just warming it up in Lightroom post, um, which I did give it a warm feeling because that, that place there always has this kind of a warm glow to it anyway. So I really wanted to portray that. Um, so that was some good advice. Um, and I think you gave me a couple pieces of advice about uh, getting close to, um, and uh, getting that nice shallow creamy depth uh, um, bokeh and uh, using it to isolate. Um, Yep. Isolate images of the white models and such. Totally. And I, if I remember right, I, I asked you a lot of questions about, you know, what was the purpose of the shoot? What were you trying to do? What is the final outcome that the owner wanted? So why, basically, why are they paying you to 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 shoot it? And you know, it's and I think you said it was to attract people. They put it on their website, show how friendly the pub is, you know, and uh, also get people that are happy and kind of mingling around and give it that warm feeling yes so so i think you know that's that's a lot of important things if anyone's ever doing a commercial shoot and i do quite a few of them i sit down with the client you know for quite a long time and we kind of run through why they want me to shoot it because often now people will come to you and they'll say look can you photograph my uh, bar or my pub or restaurant and you don't know why they want to do that so if you're just going to photograph it just the way it is you the customers probably won't be happy because yeah. they actually want a certain look to attract the certain customer so um so those are a lot of questions i asked you and I, uh, did it get you thinking at all yeah and there was also those questions i relayed to the customer as well and it kind of helped him uh help both of us gel together um some ideas so um yeah he, he was really into just selling the mood of the place 
So that's what that was the, probably the most useful piece of information I got out of town. Okay, cool. And I know a lot of other people um, put comments in there too, uh, Matthew. What what else did you take out of the the sick lounge, the community? You know, once you put it in there, uh, maybe I should ask the question a little bit differently. Would you have photographed the place differently if you didn't get this information from everyone in the community? Um, maybe a little different. I, I don't think I um, my my thinking wasn't as focused until after I talked to the community. That kind of helped focus me in. Again, relay that information to the customer, and together we both came to a better idea, understanding of what he wanted. So yeah, okay. I think I was a little more scattered beforehand, and I was a little more focused afterwards. What, All what right. So, so any tips you can give people that are doing a first-time commercial shoot? You know, what like a couple of things that you learned from the shoot, and even things that you learned before the shoot what you know the certain questions you should maybe ask setting the expectation of the customer and what things could go wrong and how you should uh, kind of prepare for things that might happen during the shoot first step triple check your equipment <laughs> <laughs> don't let your batteries explode on you in the middle of the shoot that's not a bad, 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 bad deal um, okay, so with the batteries exploding, like what? It what did you have to do? Yeah, well, it just did not. It, it gave me. It had a full charge on it, and I put it in my battery. It said no longer compatible with this camera. I'm like, what? Oh. I've been using the battery for two years and had no problems. So, yeah, no matter what I did, so just stop recognizing okay. my camera. That's so I have camera. extra batteries, uh, extra I equipment, backup, backup equipment. equipment. Um, it doesn't hurt to uh, rent before you buy i did rent a lens for this a wide angle with something i was lacking and that really saved me in fact i probably used that about 60 percent of the time um oh, that's a good good really good tip yeah um, you can save some money on the, on the back end with that especially if you're not going to use that lens a lot um yeah. you rent for the situation um yep. and can yeah. you actually pass that that um rental charge of the rental cost onto the customer so can you add it to your invoice or factor it in somehow yeah um yeah i i i did a little bit um and uh i probably should have factored in a little more but um that, that, that's another thing lessons learned um first time doing a real business shoot so um ne ne next time through i'll know a little more no no a little more the second time through yeah so about like pricing and actually pricing your time and yeah because did it take you a lot longer than you expected like with the editing the post processing of the photo shoot um the post didn't quite take as long as i it, it took about as long as i expected what took me a lot longer was um once i was in there shooting realizing okay i only got so much time to get this, to get all this done and then and even though i made and that was another thing i did make a checklist it is okay. if you do not make a checklist you're going to be wandering around aimlessly like a, just completely lost when you have all these great ideas in your mind, when you once you get down to the photography, you got to do the work. That goes yeah. out the window. So yeah, have a checklist with you. That's um, a great, you. great tip there, Matthew. And whenever I photographed weddings, I always had a checklist, uh, basically a, a shot list of all the images that I had to have, and then some optional images. So I put the maybe the top ten images that I had to have, and then I'd go for the optional ones if I had time. Because yeah, you're right. When you get stressed and there's people around you and everyone's kind of breathing down your neck when you're photographing and you're thinking about lighting and you're thinking about where people should be and what their mood should be and there's so many other things to think about. And if you and with that stress, sometimes you might forget which images you should be actually capturing. So that, yeah, that's a great tip for everyone. You know, a check checklist or a, a shot list. Yeah, surprisingly. Awesome time before the shoot took me a lot longer a lot more time than i expected than at the actual after the shoot post-processing all right so give me times that you think you actually spent on this project how much time um i probably spent i don't know uh six seven hours before i even do the shoot just setting up getting ideas hunting down for example i i would go through other photography places with shot bars and get ideas pull those ideas in, and kind of build myself a uh Kind of a mental shot list and then turn that shot list into a checklist so there was a lot more up front than i expected so you know five six hours easy um okay. and then and the actual shoot and then the actual shoot the actual shoot was almost a half day i started at about one o'clock i shot till um about five and then i got dinner and i came back and shot for another about three or four hours probably three hours okay. 
Um, okay, and so that, that was the event with the band and the people in the pub. Right. And then by so, that time, um, yeah. I was at the my creative at the end of my rope creatively. I <laughs> couldn't come up with any more interesting things to do. <laughs> yeah, and then the the post processing part. Uh, post processing. Um, I think over about um, two days um, at about an hour and a half, two hours um, each day. Um, okay. All right. So, so in, in total, well, in total, I'm seeing two and a half days of work, right, mm -hmm. for that job. Yeah. Maybe more. Maybe three days with going back and forth to the client, you know, submitting invoices and stuff. So maybe three working days uh mm -hmm. for, for you and uh did do you think you charged accordingly no <laughs> <laughs> okay. way less than i should have but yeah, was, so, i was i wasn't I, I myself wasn't um i was confident as i could be but just going into the unknown i wanted yeah. to be fair to him um he asked me i've been a customer of his for a long time so it's the yeah. first time the roles have flops um yeah. so there's a lot of things going on but you did give me a good piece of advice when i was kind of nervous about doing it was fake it until you make it yes so um and did it work uh yeah it helped he kind of he asked a few questions like yeah i, I you know i i occasionally i use the terms working knowledge um of, okay. of what I'm <laughs> <laughs> so but you know now i have that knowledge so yeah. awesome well, thanks for that, Matthew. You've, um, you've given us some great tips, and anyone watching this, some great tips for when you're doing a commercial shoot. And I think, yeah, one of the one of the good tips is fake it before you make it. So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have all this experience when you go do a commercial shoot. You just need to have the confidence that you can actually get through it okay. And and um, and charge the, or the second bit of advice I would say from this um, from this commercial shoot is charge for the actual hours you put in. So if you think the shoot's going to be one or two hours, it's end up, it's going to end up being three days of your time. So three eight hours of working, which actually might be longer because you don't always work eight hours in a day when you're working for yourself. You maybe only work five hours, so it actually might be longer. And then also take spare batteries and spare, um, you know, equipment, uh, rent equipment. That's a really good one that you that you gave cust uh, the people watching this. Uh, rent equipment. You don't have to buy. You don't have to have all the best gear. You just rent it for the day. And I would say you need to put that in the invoice to your customer as um, equipment costs. Uh, you know, special equipment costs for this uh, certain event. And um, and a checklist. Having a checklist of um, things that you want to photograph. I think that's a great, great suggestion. Now, anything else, Matthew, you want to say about the lounge and, you know, how it's helped you with your photography? And I'll, I'll share the screen of the, the, the Share Inspire Create Lounge again. Um, really, it seems like everybody's there to help each other out, um, share knowledge as much as they can, um, ask lots of questions. Um, that's the best thing is that this gives me a place to ask lots of questions to get a lot of opinions back. Um, and, uh, yeah, you and Johnny just have a, I don't know, this unending well of energy to keep up with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but you do. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really nice, great place to be. It's, it's everybody's really there to help you. Um, and you know, when I have a piece of information, I think I feel I can share, I go ahead and do that as well. Um, the critiques are particularly helpful. Um, yep. You know, not everybody's uh, going to be there and say, oh, it's a great photo, it's a great photo. There's actually some true feedback. And, and that's, yeah. you know, that's even a learning process. Um, and that's yeah, even a good, sure. a good skill you're going to develop if you're part of the community. Yeah, and I'm just running through it now. I'm actually running through the little bit about where people actually put their images in there and they get feedback, uh, positive, encouraging feedback from from people in the lounge, you know, what's, what's wrong with this picture? And then also we've got the media section, which I, I love is, you know, you can jump into this section here and have a look at what people are actually posting and give everyone feedback on, on the images they're posting. So there's some really good stuff there. Matthew, thank you so much for, for being on this, uh, you know, this real life case study of what's happening in the, in the sick lounge. I really appreciate it. Any last advice you can give to, anyone wanting to improve their photography, what's the, the, the best thing they can do right now? Um, keep shooting and find a group of people that are happy to help. I think awesome. that's one of the places to be. Great. Well, thanks, Matthew. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you later.
Thank you.